Hey, Steeler Nation, welcome back to the Steeler Wade Show. This is my 47th time trying to record this. So let's go with the mock draft. Welcome back. We're only two days away, folks. So, um, like 40 hours from when I'm recording this, we will start this Steeler Nation party. This is going to be one of the best weekends of the year for all of us. Um, I did a couple drafts uh, when I first started doing this podcast, and uh, my things haven't really changed too far away from those. The only thing that has changed is that I, uh, I'm i not going to be as heartbroken if we don't get Joey Porter. He was my ultimate pick. He was my best wish. He was all I wanted. I mean, uh, end all, be all, the whole magic, the drama of it all. And I started thinking that maybe I don't want all that drama, you know. Um, I like him so much, and I just, maybe it might just be too much for him. You know, the media will be on him. They'll always be under the spotlight. He'll always have, you know, something to prove on a higher level than what he already is going to be under. So, if he comes our way, it'll be great. They know what they're doing. And uh, I'll be all for it. I don't think he'll be available at 17 if they, and I cannot see them passing him up. So, um, let's just say he's not going to be available. Um, I don't think any of the tackles um, are worth my time um, this year. Uh, I'm going to move up to anybody like Roderick uh, Jones, um, Darnell Wright um, is intriguing. I don't know if I want to spend a 17 pick on him, uh, even though probably he might be worth it for this uh, year's draft. So I went, my first pick is Brian Brisset, uh, the defensive tackle out of Clemson. And uh, he's a monster. He's an absolute monster in there. And uh, some people might think that he's a reach at 17. Um, you know, who knows? Um, it's, uh, it's not a very exciting pick, you know, because you're not going to see him like right away start just filling, you know? Um, but, uh, you know, it's a good solid pick. My second pick is a little more exciting. At 32, I'm going to pick Darnell Washington, tight end out of, uh, Georgia. I loved watching play. He's a mauler out there. The things he does in blocking and the things that I think that he can help us with in between the 10 and the 20-yard range and also in the red zone and also as a distraction and also his blocking is just amazing. It, it, when you watch him out there playing, it's like watching a video game. So he's my pick. The 49th pick is the hardest one for me. And with all these different cornerbacks, they always have their own certain skill sets, you know, and there's so many different sub packages and, and unique blends that they would use cornerbacks at and, you know, what type of a cornerback for this, you know. So, you know, if I could have it my way, I would like to have Drew Sanders, the linebacker out of uh, Arkansas at 49. I don't think he'll be available. So what I'm going to say is insert cornerback here. You know, whatever they pick, I'll go with cornerback at 49. I just, I, it's too hard of a pick for me. I, uh, on my other mock drafts, on both of the drafts, I picked Will McDonald. You know, like, you ever start drinking and you start to get the buzz, you know, and you drink a little more and then, like, that second buzz kicks in? Well, I, I must have had, like, that second buzz kicking in because there's, I don't think there's any way Will McDonald will ever make it to 49. So, um, he was my 49. I don't think that'll ever happen ever now. Um, so if we didn't go with Darnell Washington, I would be very happy with going with Will McDonald on, at uh, 32. Um, so 49, insert cornerback here. At 80, um, going back to defense uh, with a ball hawk. This is the safety, Mr. Brown, out of Penn State. He has a lot of interceptions. He is very intuitive. 
And I think it would be a great place for a safety to grow up in. At 120, um, since I'm going with Darnell Washington, I cannot go with my second favorite tight end, uh, who is Luke Shoemaker from Michigan. And uh, uh, so what I'm doing is going with my other pick, which was Dorian Williams, the linebacker. Uh, he is all over. He can hit. He looks he, he looks to hit. It looks to hit hard, but he can cover a nice range. And I think that it's uh, a very good pick to uh, to uh, do something like that. Um, I have 120. Okay, here we go. So that's those are the major ones. Um, now, when you talk about the seventh round picks, uh, those are basically just teams trying to tie up a uh, a uh, player that they don't want to have to deal with in the undrafted market because that happens very fast you know some of these guys are getting signed within an hour two hours after they boom they're undrafted you know and uh, that's my chicken and uh, so in the seventh round I'm gonna just say a quarterback that is has a similar play style as Kenny does. And the other pick, I would go with wide receiver Matt Landers. Um, there was a, uh, there's lots of different players out there that have caught my eye. I get a little draft crushes on. And, uh, uh, but those are, those are my picks. I wouldn't mind seeing them pick up in the undrafted class. I wouldn't mind see them seeing them pick up a uh, a uh, a running quarterback and use him in weird stuff. Like I would say, dress Kenny, dress Mitch, and then don't dress the third guy, the third quarterback, but dress this fourth one um, and use him in weirdo plays. You know, use him in that wildcat position or in the jet sweeps. Or on the just to throw things off, you know? Even if you just used him six plays a game. You know? That'd be a nice undrafted. I wouldn't mind seeing an undrafted running back. A bigger running back. Not like some bruiser type guy. But like a bigger running back with great hands. You know, somebody else that could possibly do like 15% of the time uh, hang out in the slot position. I like, you know, I recently found out, I mean, I've been watching football. I recently found out that Tyreek, uh, uh, what's his name? Hill, the guy that was a dolphin, or this. But he came out a running back. I didn't know that. So there's all kinds of options out there. Now, that draft is nice and kind of safe and not very exciting. But what I got right here. This is what it is. This is the Steeler Wade Show, a uh, real mock draft. Thank you for sticking around, because this is where it gets fun. See, what I did is my bride gave me uh, the money to pay the rent, and I took that money, and I went straight to the horse track. I have bet the rent. I have bet the rent on Mr. Jalen Carter. I have sold our 17th pick our 49th pick, and our 120th pick to move up to the sixth pick from the Detroit Lions to get Jalen Carter. Now, I'm not sure exactly if those three picks compensate exactly. Up, down, a little salt, little seasonings, a little, you know, this or that, you know, if next year's draft or we get, or they get, or a seventh or whatever. But we'll just stick with, I lost the 17th, the 49th, and the 120. But we have the best player that's available in this draft class. We have uh, the best pressurizer coming in. And what a great, what a great place for him to have no pressure, just to come right in to uh, working with uh, uh, Cam and uh, Larry O. And so that's my big news. I'm going all in. At 32, 
I decided to trade back with the Seattle Seahawks. And at 37, I went back and picked Dorian, uh, Darnell Washington again at 37. We don't get to pick again until pick 80. I went back and still picked Mr. Brown, the safety from Penn State. I still think his ball hawking skills is exactly what we're looking for. And at pick 123, I went with Dorian Williams, the linebacker again. So that is your fancy stuff. Folks, hope you have a great day. We are so very close and looking forward to any comments. If you like what you hear, please press like. If you want to hear some more, bam, hit subscribe. You can find me on Twitter at Steeler Wade Show. And folks, have a great one. Steeler Nation.